Inflation's a concept I've mostly associated with cartoony animation gags and simple game mechanics. Dig Dug, an 80s Namco arcade classic, would use inflation as an attack function. I'm an astronaut drilling underground to pump monsters full of air until they explode to raise my score. Super Mario Sunshine, while inflation's not its main offense, has used expansion on some enemies. I can only wonder what filling something until it pops could inspire for the future. Overused DeviantArt and economic jokes aside, a free RPG game titled Wicked Pump was brought to my attention through a DeviantArt link my friend sent me on Discord. Out of bored impulse, I'd taken the liberty of streaming it amongst my friends, aiming to mock a low-quality fetish game for fun. Okay, no cap, fellas, this is Undertale, but better, and I will die by that statement. Me and my friends even got into character and voice acted improv scenes. Hell, some of them are even inspired enough to mimic the art style. Get out! Stop me. sniffing my hair. Get out! Before I begin, although Wicked Pump contains no nudity and has a cartoony charm to it, out of respect for the creator, please do not engage with the game or content surrounding it until you're 18. Without further ado, I'll now passionately ramble about Wicked Pump and why it holds a special place in my heart. Wicked Pump is made in RPG Maker VX Ace, created by Shameful Radio and written by Matthew22. This isn't to be confused with Wicked Pump the Unity platformer, since it's irrelevant to the RPG. I've looked through Shameful Radio's work on DeviantArt and Pelifort. There's obvious passion for the characters and the world they've built around them. The art style's mainly cartoony, but more intense imagery is clearly not unfamiliar to them. There's not much lore you'll learn through the art's descriptions, as you'd see visually. Personally, I appreciate vague details that shroud art and mystery, allowing room for creative imagination. Unfortunately, Shameful Radio's on hiatus with no activity since March 24, 2021. I said this four months ago, and they posted on DeviantArt April 19th, so I guess they're no longer on hiatus? Neat! Wicked Pump's color choice is just right. Each stage has environments that follow a specific theme enforced by their enemy designs. I haven't seen colors used so effectively for a pixel game since Castlevania Harmony of Dissidents, a game released in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance, which coincidentally is ranked the most colorful game for that handheld device. Instead of a uniquely composed soundtrack, the game utilizes 36 pre-existing songs. We only recognize the two caretaker tracks, La Bête's Delay and All You Are Going To Want To Do Is Get Back There. The 34 remaining tracks weren't commonly recited tunes and are shown to be quite obscure when I search them up for myself. Me and my friends agreed that the tracks were applied appropriately and didn't feel out of place. The atmosphere remained inviting until we'd reached a tropical stage where enemies behave unpredictably from the previous stages. The shattered woman being the most disturbing next to that dancing twinkle f who glassed me in one hit and the frizzy haired shark whale. I'm always one to appreciate oddballs that don't stray far from the game's style. In typical RPG fashion, our party has abilities unique to each member. Omnia has wickedness, Llama has nature power, and Las Vegas has demonic zap. Playing the game, you'll quickly realize that there's no leveling system. Instead, we acquire new skills for combat by progressing the story, and can increase our stats with consumables found throughout the game's levels or by defeating enemies. If you're like me and thought Wicked Pump's combat system is similar to Lisa, that's because both games make use of Yanfly's input combo skills, a script that allows specific button sequences with sufficient mana to activate special attacks. What sets Wicked Pump's combat system apart from other RPGs is Omnia's inflation ability, Wicked Pump. That being said, I cannot talk about these abilities without first talking about the cast of characters. This purple 4 foot 1 short stacks an insensitive chaotic magician with an enthusiasm for body expansion, which according to my friend group is just like you for real. A statement I don't disagree with. Although she's the main character of this story, she'd remain the most mysterious throughout the game, as I hardly learned anything about her besides possibly being a vessel, a puppet, or particular form of a greater power. Despite being shrouded in mystery, her attack swing batter is the most vanilla in comparison to her companions. It's weak with the random chance at stunning an enemy. An okay attack, but hardly holds a candle to her wickedness abilities. Llama's our supporting healer in the group. Her personality's innocent, nurturing, and is often kind even to those who hardly deserve it. A comment my group of friends made while playing was that she's fluttershy, but wider. I didn't particularly use Llama for attacking since her strength lies in healing. Her attack Workchop is an input combo, and although it's stronger than Omnia's swing batter attack, 
Llama's better off defending to replenish mana since I only ever used her attacks as additional damage for finishing off an enemy. The last in our party's composition is Las Vegas. She's my personal favorite, not just by design, but also how powerful her demonic zap abilities are. The animation behind her attacks are quite satisfying at delivering likely the 6 million Kelvin worth of microwave radiation onto enemies. She serves as the tower's guard, or at least until I showed up, distracted her from her guard post, and then inflated her into a cherry bomb. Get it? Because she's red and explodes. She's our non-magic damage dealer, who substitutes mana with TP, a stat that gradually increases with each attack but does not carry over into subsequent battles. The most efficient way to gain TP and use Demonic Zap is to use her input combo, Thunder Call. It's best to use Thunder Call input combos as you'll do more damage with the combo followed by its ability activation. Thunder Call was my go-to finisher until Omnia achieved her wiki gain transformation, which I'll get into later. As we progress the game, our party gains additional skills. Omnia learns Wiki Gain and Wiki Bloat as additional transformations similar to our base transformation Wiki Flate. Llama learns Nature Power skills that can heal or resurrect her companions, allowing me to save on consumables. And Las Vegas learns Demonic Zap abilities with higher damage output. Oddly enough, some of these attacks seem fit for AoE. If some of these attacks were originally intended to damage multiple enemies at once, I'd believe it. However, we never see that since it's always 1v3s with no multiple mob engagements. Near the end of the game, all three characters achieve their super attacks. Omnia's Blind Home Run, Llama's Grand Axe, and Las Vegas Maroon Beam. I rarely use these super attacks as their cost wasn't worth waiting for. The enemies I was dealing with by now were quite powerful and were best defeated through Omnia's Wiki Gain Transformation. Omnia's Wiki Gain Transformation does cost all of her mana, but because I'd hoarded so many consumables in my playthrough, the term Supply Shortage didn't exist anymore, so I game-ended enemies with ease. Otherwise, I'd use Wikiflate since it offers the same defense and health buffs, minus the two in a row Wrecking Ball Force punches that Wikigain has. The star of this segment was saved for last, Omnia's Wicked Pump ability, a double-edged sword that eliminates foes at the cost of double drops. Over time, the consequences of overinflating enemies show once you lack sufficient consumables to survive. That wouldn't have been a problem if I'd used Llama's healing instead of Wicked Pump to save my ass. The worst of this ability was that some enemies benefited from it, making them overpowered and nearly impossible to win against them. Watch her get stronger because you did this. Oh, nope, never mind. You took her out immediately. Uh... Though it's not a big deal since who's inflatable and who's not once you've done it the first time becomes easy to distinguish. On my second playthrough, I'd use Wicked Pump sparingly. Inflation wasn't always the logical choice. But when desperate times call for desperate measures, I've never been happier to have burst a b like a New Year's balloon. So tiny and frail! I, I hope you surely get- Yeah, 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 that's what- Woo! Woo! That's what I'm talking about! That's what I'm talking about! Yeah! Screw you! What do you mean I won, question mark? What are you talking about? What the fuck? Radio somehow fleshed out an idea that only scratched the surface of what could be done with it. The inflation aspect subverted my expectations only to surprise me by turning inflation into a useful combat mechanic with an unexpected strategic depth to using it. I didn't think I'd care to know more about a game whose main selling point was inflation, but it has lore, accompanied by a charming set of characters. Though with any game I like, I can't help but feel like there could have been more to it. The game has no puzzles or scattered lore to lengthen the game beyond its linear interact and attack mechanics. Combat would be more engaging with multiple enemies in battle, but the tedious work to rewrite all the health and damage values for that extra PvE pizzazz isn't worth it. As for lore, the library could have included books with vague writings detailing the world around us, a side quest to dig up artifacts on the beach for that bratty frog flower girl in the tropics. Maybe find runes that a character is capable of reading that are carved into the walls. With a team of two, I can't expect a lot, but you can tell a lot went into this game, so I praise it for that alone. Games, like films or animation, can help introduce us to new worlds compared to their illustration or literature sources. I feel as if this game is a good introduction to Shameful Radio's potential and what they're capable of doing for the long run. 
Wicked Pump's concept is executed properly, and doesn't do poorly by any means. I believe that if Wicked Pump was given a sequel, that it'd allow more time to detail the characters and the world as Shameful Radio does in their drawings. This has been my analysis of Wicked Pump, and I thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time.